Hello, my dear students. Welcome again to our English uh, lessons. Today, we are going to have a poetry uh, uh, for Shakespeare. We are going to take the poem Sonnet 18. So let's start. What is a sonnet? What is the meaning of sonnet? Sonnet is a poem usual about love and is usually uh, consists of 14 uh, lines and the rain pattern uh, is always A, P, A, P, C, D, C, D, E, F, E, F, G, 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 G. So let's read the sonnet. The sonnet starts with Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, and summer's leaves have all too short a date. Sometimes too hot the eye of heaven shines, and often is his gold complexion diamond. And every fear from fear sometimes this line by chance or nature's changing course under mine. But the eternal summer shall not fade, nor lose possessions of the fear thou owest, nor shall death brag the wonders in his shade when in eternal lines to time thou growest. So long as men can breathe, or eyes can see, so long lives this, and this gives lives to thee. So let's start, what does the poem mean, or this sonnet? For the first uh, quatrain, here he, uh, William Shakespeare asks us a good question. He says, shall I compare thee to a summer's day? So what does mean? It means, shall I compare you to a summer's day? You are more lovely and more constant. Rough winds shake the beloved buds of me, and the summer is far too short. The second quatrain, when he says, sometimes too hot, the eye of heaven shines. The eye of shines here means the sun. At the time that the sun is too hot or often goes behind the clouds, and everything beautiful sometimes will lose its beautiful, its beauty by misfortune or by nature's planned out course. The third quatrain, by the eternal summers shall not fade, nor lost possessions of the fair though oldest, nor shall death brag though wonders in his shade, when in internal lines to time thou growest. Here he says, but your youth shall not fade, nor will you lose the beauty that you possess, nor will death claim you for his own, because in my eternal verse, you will live forever. So long as the, are the people here on the earth, so long will this poem live on, making you immortal. So let's take the vocabulary and the meaning of it. First one, temperate, means mild and constant. Number two, lees, means hold. Complexion, means skin tune. Declines, means lessons. Untermed, means without trimmings, without decoration. Number four, eternals mean forever. Owest means owes. Wondrous means wonder. Growest means grow, grows. Now, with the paraphrase. The poet asks whether he should compare his beloved to a day in summer. He refuses. He refused to do so. He refused to compare his beloved to a summer in uh, to a day in summer. Uh, so as he declares that she is more lovely and more sweet tempered. He then lists the things that he doesn't like about summer day. Even May strong winds sometimes blew, shaking the small fragile blood uh, buds. Summer doesn't last long. Sometimes the sun makes the weather too hot. Sometimes the sky is cloudy. It's a well-known 
fact that every beautiful creature will at some point stop being beautiful, either through some accident or because it's a nature for all living things to grow old and die. But he says that his beloved youth and beauty, on the contrary, will last forever. She will never lose her beauty or be affected by the age and death will never be able to put her in its dark shadow. In fact, she will live in lines of verse in his poetry that cannot die. So in this poem, he uh, tells us that his uh, beauty uh, or, or the beauty of his, uh, of his beloved uh, will never fade, will never, uh, will never end because he wrote about her in his verse and in his poem uh, so she will live uh, as long as this poem will live so he says as long as men live and as long as they read poetry the poet's verse will live and his beloved will live in it so let's uh, continue to figures of speech number one the contrast when he says shall i convert thee to a summer's day thou are more lovely and more temperate so here the image of hot summer is contrasted with the delightful image of his beloved to enrich the meaning. So he merely contrasts. We mean what we mean by contrast means the opposite meaning. Number two, the contrast also in and summer's lees has all too short date. The image of short summer is uh, is contrasted with the ever lasting memory of his beloved to enrich the meaning so he means that the, the summer is short but but the uh, but his uh, beloved will live forever so there is alliteration in uh, in the line rough winds do shake the darling buds of me so what we mean by alliteration, alliteration means to repeat the first sound many times, uh, two or more uh, times in the same line. Like here, the uh, D sound is repeated and the other two words do and darling to give musical effect. There is a metaphor also when he says sometimes too hot the eyes of the heaven shines. So when he says the eyes of the heaven, he means the sun. So the poet describes the sun as the eye of the heaven. So it's a metaphor. Personification here in when he says sometimes too hot the eye of heaven shines. <coughs> the, poet, uh, the poet compares heavens to a human being who has eyes and can see. Personification also when he say and often his gold complexion diamond. The poet compares summers to a girl with a face and complexion and there is also alliteration in the line sometimes too hot the eye of heaven shines the h sound is repeated in these two words in hot and heaven so the two words hot and heaven begins with uh, begin with uh, the sound ha or h to give musical effect there is also an alliteration in the line and every fear from fear sometimes de declines. The F sound repeated in the three words fear from fear to give musical effect too. There is also alliteration in by chance where nature is a changing course and trim it. The T sound, uh, ch sound is repeated in the word chance and the changing to give the musical effect. Metaphor, there is a metaphor also when he says, but the eternal summer shall not fade. When he say, the poet compares the beauty of his beloved to a summer. So it's a metaphor. Personification here also in when he said, nor shall death brag though wonders in, uh, wonder in, in, his, fate, in his shade. The poet compares death to a person who is proud of his power and possesses something. There is alliteration when he say, when in internal lines to time, though growest, uh, the T sound is repeated. The T sound is repeated. And these two words 
to get uh, to and time and they give musical musical effect okay now with the series alliteration so long leave this and this gives lives to the to these and the l sound is repeated in these two words and uh, is repeated in these two words long and live so the uh, the sound in long and live l is repeated to give musical effect and repetition when he said more fair so long he uh, repeated this to on order to internal music so the rhyme scheme here what's the rhyming scheme as we said uh, a p a p c d c d e f e f and g g now let's take some questions and answers what is a sonnet and what is the difference between the italian and shakespearean sonnet the sonnet is a poem of 18 lines dealing with one idea or emotion uh, and that idea or emotion is usually a person a personal one the sonnet originated in uh, Italy and its first form was divided into two parts uh, one consisting of eight lines octet and the other of six is sestet. Uh, Shakespeare changed the internal form of sonnet and he divided the 14 lines into three quatrains and a heroic couplet okay number two what will make the ladies beauties everlasting he, uh, her beauty will be everlasting in his verse of poet sonnets that will be repeated among people forever, as long as men live and as long as they read poetry. Number three, in Sonnet 18, Shakespeare says that the poetry defi defies time. Discuss. Shakespeare believes that the poetry defeats time and death. He says that poetry prevents death and time from frightening the people who are mentioned in the poems. Number four, why does the poet use a repetition of a certain word, a repetition, sorry, of, a, of certain words to create internal music pattern uh, in the sonnet? Uh, for example, uh, he repeated the words more, the word fear, the word so long. And the last question is, write short note on, on Shakespeare, on the poem, and the poet uh, William Shakespeare who wrote this sonnet. We said Shakespeare was born in 1564 and he died in 1616. He wrote 37 plays and uh, 134 sonnets. He is still popular because he is actually not of one age, but for all time. Thank you for listening so much and wait for me uh, for the uh, next uh, video. Inshallah. See you uh, soon.